Hello everyone and welcome back to Vulnerability Weekly, the weekly show where we explore the latest vulnerability, what's been affecting, what exploit around there, and what's hot in the market in terms of vulnerability. Zero day, non-zero day, we, we will explore them all. This week, likely, we have been not affected by a high number of vulnerabilities. There have been, it's been, as you can consider, a bit of a quiet week. So we can dive deeper on fewer vulnerability and we can rest as defender, even though we need to stay alert, but uh, we can rest a little bit <laughs> this week. This week, the maybe hot news has been the continuation of QNAP. QNAP had uh, three or four uh, advisory or recently with their server, their NAS servers. Um, and QNAP is a manufacturing of NAS servers, a, a Taiwanese manufacturing of NAS servers. They have been recently um, hammered by a number of vulnerabilities discovered. And even worse, those vulnerabilities have been weaponized by ransomware. So there have been several uh, ransomware uh, attacks and uh, software deployed and developed to target specifically those vulnerabilities that are allowed remote code execution, hence enable remote code execution on the server and hence potential takeover. And in case of ransomware, encrypting the whole hard drive. Considering those are NAS and usually uh, maintain backup data or data in general for an organization, small and medium, they've been particularly lucrative into more ransomware attack. And the recent vulnerability is again, another high critical vulnerability around eight CVSS4 with um, that affect PHP in, in particular, that is the front end that uh, QNAP use to interface with their customer. Uh, there have been a recent work. Uh, so QNAP is still developing a fix for this particular vulnerability. Um, but it's, um, it's supposed to be releasing this, uh, this fix uh, in, in fairly quick uh, turnaround. As always, the suggestion from us is to shield those NAS servers, completely avoid accessing PHP ports, and if anything, administering those servers just on a local network to minimize the exposure from attackers, especially external, or if minimizing it in the, in the internal network by avoiding exposing administer, administrative ATAP kind of ports, uh, administer them locally. A little bit more of a hassle, but protect your private data. From an application security perspective, instead, we've seen uh, another attack on a number of library on uh, PyPy, that is the repository for library for Python. Uh, Sonatype researchers have discovered a little bit of a different attack. There's been a series of typo squatting attacks on PPI that have been affecting um, vulnerability, uh, sorry, libraries with very, very similar names and of recently, um, those have been detected and taken down quite quickly. Now, um, the, the researcher have discovered at least five or six different libraries that instead of typo squatting have normal behavior, but has a few line of code that leaks credentials, especially from an AWS. And a lot of those libraries are used to um, process data and a lot of data scientists use normally this library to process data in Jupyter Workbook or other uh, AI and data modeling functionality for AWS. So it's been a very, very targeted and sneaky attack that affects those vulnerabilities. Now on the other side, in, in the more software and SaaS deployments, there is a recent attack or a recent number of vulnerabilities was for a company that is maybe not well known in the industry as a while, but very well known in the healthcare industry. Illumia, Illumina uh, is a data processing for healthcare data for RNA and COVID tests and a lot of these kind of 
um, healthcare data and has been hit by a number of vulnerability after a pen test um, on their organization. Now, those software that traditionally are installed on servers and system have been quickly patched and Illumi has released a number of um, bulletin for fixing those. But it's particularly critical because of the criticality and the sensitivity of the data and affecting the um, user worldwide. From a Microsoft perspective, SharePoint have recently, that there's been a vulnerability on remote code execution for SharePoint of recently, there've been several iterations of this, but there isn't yet a patch. Well, there is a patch available for several of those versions are now being distributed and released. The vulnerability was exposed on, was discovered on May and an advisory was uh, advised uh, on the 14th of June and currently the CV uh, set at 8.8, um, the CVSS uh, set at 8.8. Uh, there is another one on infrastructure, the ASA device, that is Cisco device from uh, appliance, uh, power appliance have been of recently affected by um, a software client side remote code execution vulnerability uh, that affect uh, the ASDM image installer. So if you have those that have been an advisory and an official upgrade for those vulnerable, for those appliances from Cisco. Without further ado, let's dive deeper on a few of these uh, topics. As I mentioned, PPI library has been leaking uh, AWS credentials. Sonotype have recently disclosed and discovered this particular number of library, loglib module, pgr module, pgrata, and so on, that have specific functions that uh, capture text and leak vulnerability in text file. Um, and the behavior is suspicious up to a point because the library themselves are officially and regular, they perform specific functions, but they have hidden code in uh, between. So if you can see specifically those library and those module don't have any description and any kind of information sitting out there. So it's important always to review the library and review the security and of course perform supply chain assessment of those vulnerabilities. Now, Illumi, as I mentioned, is a healthcare provider that um, fundamentally process RNA and uh, sequencing data for uh, clinical tests, particularly it's been heavily used for COVID tests and other kind of clinical tests. And there have been a pen test from um, an organization in, in the UK that have forced them to disclose to CISA and hence to the, the World Wide Web. Um, a number of vulnerability on the software and uh, the various instruments that they have to process and send data to the central system. Now, the, there are several critical vulnerability, uh, including remote code execution, path travel cells. So those are all in uh, fixing and have been an official advisory from them uh, on, um, on fixing those vulnerability on the L. Uh, local run manager that is one of their software. And if, because of the sensitivity of the data, they, they release an official statement describing what is the issue and how they're going to take care of it. But fundamentally, they are uh, upgrading the system. Now, Microsoft's land, uh, they've been recently in May, a vulnerability that we covered um, disclosed on SharePoint. This is again. Uh, a remote code execution. There have been a fixed issue of recently with this recent guidance. And um, on the 23 of June, there's been a notification from Microsoft with the patch available 
on those systems specifically. Now, if you have SharePoint upgrades to the uh, recent version, there is an official fix. And if you see in the link included in the, in the, in the blog, in our official uh, Vulnerability Weekly blog, you can see all the security updates uh, that you have available. And it, this is for SharePoint Enterprise Systems, so not the cloud version of SharePoint. Those are always upgraded individually. Now, as I mentioned, QNAP has been in the fire for several vulnerabilities and specific vulnerability attack that have been weaponized heavily. And in this particular case, there is a new vulnerability being disclosed on, on the PHP version of software that they use to expose their web interface on the system that have been previously affected by a number of vulnerabilities. In particular, uh, Deadbolt is the vulnerability and the ransomware gang that, um, that has been heavily exploited in those vulnerabilities and um, QNAP is following closely. Now, this is to cover the, the full week. As, as I said, it's been likely uh, a quite a week with just few vulnerabilities disclosed and um, hopefully we'll, <laughs> we'll have more of this during the week. But as, uh, as always, if you have mitigation, upgrade to the latest systems and follow the recommendation from the various vendors on upgrading to the latest version of the software, and in particular uh, for QNAP and others, keep an eye on those systems if uh, they, they face um, weird behavior or anomal behavior. And as soon as you see an, a bulletin alert from those vendors, please hit the segment or system until you can upgrade or upgrade them as soon as you have one of the maintenance window on upgrade window. Um, from myself, as always, stay safe, stay alert, uh, follow us on YouTube or follow the Vulnerability Weekly blog on our website, www.appsecphoenix.com. And as always, let us know what you would like to see in the next version, what you would like to explore more so that we can deliver always good quality content that you all love. Francesco Cipollone, I am uh, one of the hosts for Vulnerability Weekly, so I hope this bulletin and advisory was useful for you. Thank you very much. Stay safe.